Well, good morning, folks, and welcome to all of you who are with us at the Church of the Incarnation Toronto. We begin with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. O come, let us worship. Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our collect for this day. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now our readings. The fourth Sunday after Epiphany. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy 18. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me, from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord, your God, at Horeb, on the day of the assembly, when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name, a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. 
Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, 8. Now, concerning food sacrificed to idols, we all know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs us up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So, by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at Jesus' teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, one of the things that really fascinates me about this particular Gospel reading is the commentary on it. He taught as one having authority, and not as the scribes. It's interesting to me because it implies that somehow, not only was Jesus' teaching unique, but his teaching affected those who heard it. They heard it instantly, and they knew him instantly to have the authority to speak God's word. When the rabbis of Jesus' day taught, they would have drawn on quotes from other authorities, and that's what gave them their authority. And of course, when the prophets spoke, they always had a delegated authority, so you'd hear them say something like, Thus says the Lord. But Jesus speaks with authority that many recognize as the Word of God itself. And indeed, this implies that Jesus is the very embodiment of God's Word, its physical presence fulfillment of God's word itself. So we, centuries later, have come to say that indeed Jesus is the incarnate word, or the word of God come to live out a human or fleshly historical life with us. Thus, when he speaks and acts, this is God himself speaking and acting with us, and for us. The second thing that I find awe-inspiring is the scope of God's Word. It's not just that God's followers obey Jesus, because of course followers should obey their supposed leader, but even the demons recognize him and obey him, as we hear happens in this case. Of course, this is going to set us up for Lent as we hear about Jesus' encounter with Satan and Pilate, representing all the principalities and powers who wish to separate us from God. They work against him, or they're ignorant of him, or they underestimate him, they even turn away from him. Yet all that God has created encounters this Jesus Christ. They can't get away from him. And they are taken up in his power on the cross, whether they acknowledge him or not. All, that is, ultimately, will obey God. Ultimately, they will come as the demons do, to recognize him, to know his power, to be caught up in it. 
Now, oddly, given how poorly we often execute it, as we heard last week, God invites us into this gathering mission where he is, in fact, bringing all creation to himself, making himself known to all people so that they might recognize him. Follow me, he says. Leave those things behind you. Take up your cross and follow me. So one way or another, everyone, everything is being gathered. I can just picture Jesus saying, you know, this is not going to be a rose garden experience necessarily, my friends. God says this, and tells us this, and shows us this throughout the whole of Scripture. It is not, following God is not necessarily, or often, a rose garden experience. We often get the thorns. We often get the pruning. So maybe it is a world's kind of experience, in fact. It's not one of constant blossoming. But once you get a taste of what it is to follow me, God says to us, that there simply isn't another way. That there is only one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You'll end up, even in your doubt or fear, responding as Simon Peter did when Jesus asked if he and the disciples wanted to leave him. To whom else could we go? You are the word of eternal life. Everything in this life is aimed at that final reality. That one God. That's indeed what God is bringing about in having sent his Son into this world to take on our flesh. And it is what he calls us into, eternal life where all things have been reconciled to God. Once you know that, once you know that this is the fullness of all things, that this is the beginning and the end of all things, and you see the history of all humanity unfolded in the scriptures through that end. It's awfully difficult to look at your present life as anything but a part of that grand story. As anything but a spoke in the wheel of history being drawn up into God's own self as Ezekiel chapters 1 and 8 recount. This passage then implicitly asks us whether we're going to step into God's mission and follow him. And if we answer yes, we're then asked if we are willing to open ourselves up to God, to stop clinging to the worldly things that we think protect or hide us, or the ways of life that we think we deserve, or that we think shield us from perceived threat. We're asked to open ourselves up so that we can allow the infusion of Christ's own body to enter us by his spirit, to transform our thoughts, our actions, and ways in accordance with God's own life revealed to us in his son, Jesus Christ. So we're being asked, in other words, to open ourselves up to let go of the things that we cling to. To let go of those things that turn us into demons. Turn our actions and our thoughts into demon-like actions and thoughts. So that we can receive God's love. In order that we can bear it in our interactions with God and with other people. Augustine living in the very early 4th century, actually middle of the 4th century, remarked that faith is mighty, but without love it profits nothing. The demons even obey Christ, but lacking charity, they remain just where they are. Those who have turned away unknowingly caught in the net that Christ has caught for cast for all of us. 
They said, what have we to do with you? They confess a sort of faith, but without love. Hence, they were devils. Faith is powerful, but without love it profits nothing. Scripture tells us that true faith works through love and abounds in hope. So our faith, then, is made perfect in love because love orients us to the supreme good, which is God himself, as well as the good of our neighbor, who is created in the image and likeness of God. Hope, then, anchors our faith in the promises of God, and it reshapes our thoughts and our words and our acts, the things that will endure to the end when we're gathered to God. That is why the word of Christ has power to set us free from all that would keep us bound, chained, clinging to sin, to deception, to despair. Faith is a gift from God that enables us to see every aspect of life the good and bad, through the lens of God's desired will. Faith is what allows us to look forward and to look backward on our life and the life of all through the lens of Jesus Christ's coming into the world, to that fullness of time, the fullness of the end, and to say, I am with God, for God has taken me up. To see through that lens is to enable a person to see with hope, and so to let go of the false things they cling to, the demon-esque things they cling to, so that they might serve God and neighbor most fully. To run, and the only race that there is to the end, we must nourish it with the incarnate word whose life allows us to see in scripture and so also in our day-to-day -day life what it means to respond to God in faith. And this Lord gives us his Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds that we may grow in his truth and in the knowledge of his great love for each of us. So let us take God up on his offer of this grace. Amen.
let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now our prayer time. Our response will be, Lord, grant us peace. In joy and humility, let us pray to the creator of the universe, saying, Lord, Lord grant, grant us peace. peace. By the good news of our salvation, brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord. Lord, Lord grant, grant us peace. By the mystery of the word made flesh, Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the birth in the time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and magi, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the submission of the Maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the baptism of the Son of God in the River Jordan, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. We pray for our bishops and all the clergy. We pray for Grace Church on the Hill, its support of the Churches on the Hill Food Bank, provisions of meals for out of the cold programs, refugee resettlement work, and support of Indigenous Ministries, International Emergency Response and Development, Prison Ministry, and Food Security Organizations. For Grace Church Markham, its monthly lunch, its participation in the Pekajikum Water Project, and education and advocacy on Indigenous and rights relations issues. For Grace Church Scarborough, its monthly community lunch and cooking club, and its support of the Good Food Box. In our deanery, we pray for Advent Lutheran. For our parish families, David and Jean, Thomas, Jay, Victoria, Earl, strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. We pray for those who are ill, especially Trivi, Catherine, Margot, Barb, Gwen, Barbara, Yusuf, Yu, Doug, Joanne, Mary, Mike and Mary Pat, Ian, Carol, and Pauline. For prisoners and captives, and for their safety, health, and salvation. For all who have passed away, and for their families, especially Sandra, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Grant that the kingdoms of this world 
may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, Lord grant us peace. Continue with the confession. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Now, as our Savior, Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Just a few announcements. The first one being that, unfortunately, we won't be able to do what I was hoping, which is a a drive-by um, Ash Wednesday acknowledgement because, of course, of the stay-at-home order. So uh, Ash Wednesday will be coming up in two weeks, and it's the 17th, I believe, of February. So the 17th of February, which is a Wednesday, obviously, we will have a service that will be posted to our website, as usual, at 5 p.m. So our Ash Wednesday service coming up in a couple of weeks will be at 5 p.m. on the normal YouTube channel. And of course, uh, February is always, or almost always, vestry time. And this year it is going to be a unique one because of COVID. And we are going to be running our vestry meeting through Zoom. So if you're not familiar with Zoom, if you have internet, which presumably you do since you're on it uh, now watching the service, then just Google Zoom. You don't need to have an account to use it. We will be sending around instructions about how to get on Zoom to be able to participate in the, the uh, vestry meeting. So, for those who don't have the internet, we're going to be contacting people either via phone or via mail. And we're going to send out the vestry reports to people, which will hopefully arrive via email two weeks ahead of 
our vestry meeting. So you'll have the vestry reports, hopefully have a couple of weeks to look over those. So those will come via mail for those who don't have email and via email for those who do. Then on February the 28th, Sunday the February, February 28th, after the service has been posted and you've had a chance to watch, we will have our vestry meeting via Zoom and you can either uh, click on the link that will be sent out and we'll be able to watch through that or uh, for those who don't have it, you'll be able to telephone into the meeting. So instructions will be coming about that during February, so please watch out for them. Check your email regularly. There is information that needs to come out this month for a number of things. Vestry, of which is probably one of the more important. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with me or to get in touch with the office and we'll be able to hopefully help clarify anything. So I think that is it from my side. I hope you are all well and keeping safe. And now our dismissal. Go forth in love and the power of the Spirit to receive and to give God's love. Thanks be to God.